Hi, I'm Don Clavin, the Town of Hempstead Supervisor, and I'm joined by uh, my colleague in government, Councilman Anthony Diaz-Pizzito, and the head of the EMS right here in the Town of Hempstead, Dr. Dave Newbert, or as we like to call him, Dr. Dave, as always. Uh, I'm appreciative of all of you taking the time to join us here today, uh, and for any of our CSCA workforce, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you, uh, particularly those essential workers that are coming on a regular basis, uh, from sanitation to highways, uh, to the cemetery, to the water department, to public safety, and every other department. If you're coming in, thank you so much. And on behalf of the entire town board, as well as all the residents, thank you for doing the great job you all do, because you do a fantastic job, and we're all lucky to work with every single one of you. And the purpose of today's meeting uh, and discussion <laughs> is to take some time to talk about what's taking place right now, as well as answer some of the questions that may be lingering out there with uh, not only the town workforce, but as well as residents. Uh, so with that, uh, before we, we introduce uh, our, our in-house doctor, who's been doing a great job, I'll, I'll ask a Councilman D'Esposito if he has any comments. Oh, thanks, Supervisor. Um, and it's great to be here once again uh, with you and Dr. Dave. I think it was just a little over a month ago that we held our first uh, coronavirus uh, live on Facebook. And since then, we've been really working day and night um, with our colleagues on the town board to make sure that we keep our workforce, our residents, and our visitors healthy here in the town of Hempstead. I just want to thank all our essential workforce, regardless of their department, uh, for the great job that they're doing uh, and the leadership that they're showing in, in these tough times. And I want to thank Dr. Dave and his crew, um, who have really just been all over the town of Hempstead and beyond, uh, helping those in need and making sure that uh, we flatten the curve and get past the, the worst of this pandemic. So thank you, Doc. Yeah, thank and, you. And, 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 and with that, uh, as, as the councilman said, this has been uh, an effort between not only the government but the residents uh, and all the co-workers here in the town about uh, taking the steps necessary to flatten the curve and get past this epidemic. Uh, and we're very fortunate to have Dr. Dave with us uh, from the beginning. Uh, many of you uh, who work in the town might have had the time to interact with the doctor or his team. Uh, they've been going out to facilities, uh, answering questions, alleviating concerns, and also helping us to put into to place safeguards from the very beginning when we started looking at this back in January. Safeguards for the workforce as well as for the residents who used our facilities uh, that I think have benefited all of us in the long run and particularly here in the town of Hempstead have really uh, saved lives as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Dave to, to you know, uh, of course have your comments, maybe give uh, everybody that's watching a little bit of a, a, a breakdown of what what's going on there, and then we'll start taking some questions. Um, and I know one of the first ones are gonna be some of the items right in front of you. So Dr. Dave, as always, thank you, and, and please. Yep, Supervisor, Councilman, thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, so uh, I'm sure there will be plenty of questions about masks today, so I brought some with us. Uh, we'll uh, do that when we get into the uh, question and answer session. Um, as uh, as my, uh, my friends and colleagues in government have been talking to you guys about, uh, it's been a long haul from the beginning, and we all know everything that you're going through. And um, the last time we did this, I talked to you guys about being our civilian responders and, and taking your steps that, that uh, have to be taken for us to slow the spread of the virus and to uh, protect each other and do what's socially responsible for each other. Um, at least at this point, it does appear uh, that the uh, that, that curve that we've been talking about is starting to flatten and that we're at the plateau. Uh, but all of us know that we have seen many uh, friends and family members and colleagues and, um, and, and people that we know get sick. And sadly, we've seen people die. And that's uh, terrible. And what you see in a pandemic. Um, the last time we saw anything like this was probably the 1918 flu pandemic. Thankfully, um, that was uh, actually worse than this, so we are actually doing better, but that does not mean that we need to be complacent, and that does not mean that everything that we've been talking about is not important to continue. We, it, it's very hard to be disciplined to do social distancing. It's against everything that we've ever done. Um, it's against our, we're New Yorkers. We like to interact with each other. We like to shake hands and hug and, and, and hang out and, and do things together, and it's very hard to tell people to not do that. But understand that these, uh, these tools, these uh, 
um, uh, these uh, things that we're giving to empower you to protect yourself and to protect your colleagues and your friends, they are extremely important and they work. These are true, tried and true uh, steps to take when you have a pandemic. And while it does seem that some of these things are archaic, um, until we get uh, antibody testing and uh, vaccines, and uh, I was just talking to the, the folks here, um, I work at NYU Winthrop Hospital, they're working very hard on treatments there. I know all the hospitals, um, all of the systems are working on this where they're looking to find treatment. So there's things that we are doing as, as medical professionals to make it better for everybody. But until then, we have to do the social distancing. You need to stay six feet away from people. We'll talk about the masks in a little bit um, uh, into why this works and why now we're recommending them. We'll bring that up in the question and answer uh, session. Um, it's important to wash your hands. Um, washing hands will kill the virus. It, de it deactivates the proteins and the fats that keep the virus together. And actually hand washing is the absolute best thing that you can do to fight this. Um, constantly washing your hands. Um, hand sanitizer if you don't have that. Got mine here. Uh, you know, uh, making sure that you don't touch your face and making sure you stay separated so your cough droplets and you, uh, don't spread the virus to other people. Uh, you know, it's going to be coming up in the summer. It's going to be very hard for us not to want to congregate with people, but we have to stick to what we're doing. Don't uh, let up now. It's working. It's been a toll. We don't want it to get worse. We want to get through this. We want to open things up. We want the economy to recover, but we have to continue doing what we're doing now and trust that we're taking the steps we need to take that we've been talking every time to protect you to protect our workers, to protect, um, you know, everyone that's out, our, our, our frontline people that are on the, uh, you know, fighting this on the front lines. We're, we're doing the things we need to do to empower them. You need to do what you need to do. Stay home. Don't go out to help us get the job done better. We'll work together and, you know, we're going to have to go through this together. It's, this is unprecedented. None of us have seen this in 100 years. So we're figuring this out together and, and, and make this work. But we're here for you and we're, the, you know, here for each other. So important Thank, that we do that. Thank you, Doc. And we're, yeah. and we're glad to have you on the team. And it, it's great to see so many people are, are taking the time to join us. Um, one of the one of the questions that just jumped out at me uh, was an individual said, "What's up with the property taxes?" Uh, over a month ago, uh, the receiver of taxes, myself as well as the councilman and the entire town board, uh, every member reached out to the governor's office to ask them to extend the second half property tax payment for school taxes. They're currently due this year on a Monday, uh, May 11th. Uh, we have not received a response from the governor's office. Uh, in addition to ourselves, I know the county legislators and I believe the assembly members have asked the governor for an extension. Uh, based on the governor's announcement yesterday that he is extending yet again uh, the mandatory almost lock-in for another month, we are going to be reaching out to the governor again and ask him to do the right thing and extend this time period to pay taxes 30 days. That would extend it all the way to June 11th. We're hopeful the governor will listen to us and I am going to urge everybody uh, that has been emailing and writing and making this post. Do us a favor. Email the governor directly too. Let him know. It's when, you know, the elected officials are one voice, but the residents' voices are the strongest when they reach them directly. We're going to be reinforcing and going and sending yet another correspondence to the governor's office, but it falls on his jurisdiction. And it has happened before. It's been extended during uh, time periods that it was necessary, super storms. Uh, during other uh, blizzards, 9-11, uh, there was an extension of time uh, payment uh, for taxes. So we're asking the governor yet again, but we're asking you to also take that time. Time to send us an email. I know I've received countless emails. The councilman has, the receiver has, as well as all of our colleagues in government. And we're just asking you to join us to get that extra 30 days. We realize that people aren't uh, working right now. People are, you know with less paychecks right now, if they have any, and this is just the right thing to do. So so please, we're asking, but we'd like you to do it again, and, and we're asking our school districts to, you know, accept and, and join us. It's the right thing to ask for a 30-day extension. Uh, you know, as proceeds come into the tax office as a former receiver, the monies are sent to the school districts on a regular basis when they're there. But this is this is an unheard of event, and, and we're asking all of us to join together for that, that and that's a great question. Um, Councilman, you have another question? Yeah, so there was a question uh, that someone brought up about um, licenses, whether it's a marriage license or, um, unfortunately, uh, death certificates. So the death certificates have been, for the most part, handled um, by the funeral home, and then uh, they've been interacting with the clerk's office. But for those of you um, with marriage licenses, um, the best bet is to do one of a few things. You could either call 
uh, 516-812-3600, which is the coronavirus hotline that we've set up here in the town of Hempstead uh, to handle any of your building questions, town clerk, uh, receiver of taxes, or parks questions. Uh, you could also uh, call the town board at 516-812-3242, uh, or you could reach out to uh, by email, and it's TOH town clerk questions at tohmail.org uh, obviously you could visit our website at hempstednewyork.gov uh, to get all this information but we know that licensing is very important there are people uh, that have been calling their office and that's why the supervisor and the town board and our uh, great town clerk and receiver of taxes have uh, established this hotline and um, different ways to interact with us the, we, we see a number of questions uh, from residents who particularly have asked about the, the need for masks. Mm -hmm. And with the new directive from the governor this week, maybe you can explain to people the necessity of masks, why we have them, and the different kind of masks out there, as well as the, 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 the use or reuse of them. Of course. So uh, this was the big question, so I'm glad we're getting a chance to talk about this. Um, it's, a li it's not a change per se. We, we've always kind of been uh, alluding to the, the need for masks. So um, understand that this virus spreads mostly through cough droplets. Uh, those are little tiny um, uh, kind of spit particles that come from our mouths and go into the environment around us. In most situations, those can only go about six feet. That's where the social distancing six feet rule comes from. If I were to sneeze right now or to cough, those droplets would likely only go about six feet and then would fall to the ground. So if you're outside of that radius, you would be safe. Um, but there are tiny, tiny little droplets that can sometimes stay hanging in the air. And in most situations, it's not a big deal. However, this is why we're telling people not to go into large groups or into small spaces. If you have a large number of people in a small enclosed environment, um, uh, if, that's why we are trying to uh, prevent you know, uh, gatherings, concerts, clubs, um, weddings, that kind of uh, environment, um, then these cough droplets can stay in the air longer and can cause something that we call a super spreading event where lots of people can get sick in a very short period of time. So we need to do the social distancing. We need to minimize the number of people that we have in one place. And we need to make sure there's always good airflow with wherever we are, because then that takes these tiny little airborne particles and lets them blow away and doesn't cause an issue. Um, unfortunately, we don't know yet how much of the virus you need to be exposed to to be sick. Um, we use the idea that if you stay out of that six foot radius for about 10 minutes and you're probably okay. Um, that is something they are researching, but we want to just minimize your exposure to these in general. And now that we're trying to move forward about opening some things up at some point in time, that is why the masks now are becoming very important. Again, if you look back through other pandemics, you look back to the 1918 flu pandemic, it's uh, the places where people wore masks, those cities and towns tended to do better overall moving forward. Same thing if you look in, um, uh, in Taiwan and you look in South Korea and some other places where they wear masks on a regular basis, they seem to have had less of an impact from this. It, the the, the, the data is not perfect, but these are very simple steps that we can take to make our social distancing better. And the way the masks work is those, those cough droplets that I'm talking about, they get trapped in the mask. So if you sneeze or you cough or you speak loudly and those droplets come, they actually get caught in the fabric of the mask and then that's protecting the people around you. So think about a mask as a way to protect others. You still need to take the steps to protect yourself, the distancing, the hand washing, not touching your face, but this protects your colleagues, this protects your friends, this protects your family members. So the types of masks. Uh, this mask, which is the ones that we use in the hospital, we've been telling you from the beginning, you have to leave these masks for medical professionals like myself, like our EMS providers that are out there every day, our firefighters, our nurses, our doctors. We are actually getting within very close proximity of very sick patients that are coughing and sneezing and cannot prevent that. And we're getting showered with these droplets and this spray. These masks help to protect us because they block out a large majority of them. Um, they require special training and fitting. They have to be fit properly to your face. If it does not fit properly around your face, air gets in and then these masks are not really that helpful. So if you have these types of masks, please let them donate them, give them to health professionals. We still need them. We're getting better, but these masks are meant for us. However, these types of masks are meant for everybody. And this is what, why we want people to start wearing them. So there's two types. The, this is a reusable one. 
So this is just a regular surgical, like a, uh, like a cloth surgical mask. It's, it's a, more of a paper than a reusable cloth, but th this, is a, a good, um, this is a good tool to help protect yourself. If you're going to use any kind of mask, wash your hands first, okay? So I'm gonna put a mask on here, so I'm gonna wash my hands, okay? Make sure my hands are nice and clean because you wanna touch your face. Then when you take your mask, you wanna fit it to your face so it's gonna fit around like, as you see, and then you're gonna tie this off like this, and then I'm gonna do one down on the bottom here, and then you can see, I have this mask now, it's fitting my face, and then what I'm gonna do is just take this and just, there's a little um, uh, wire in here, and then you just make sure that that fits over your, your mouth and nose, so you feel this kind of general warmth in there, and you don't really fear air leaking in and out. This will block most of your droplets and prevent other people from getting sick. Um, if you uh, have a mask like that, it can be reused a number of times. You notice that when I took the mask off, I did not touch the inside of my mask. I took it off this way. And then you could put this in something that protects the inside, or if, if this is a clean table, you could just put that down. If you don't touch the inside and contaminate where it goes up against your face, you can use a mask like this for probably a week or two if you're not getting it wet or dirty or wearing lots of makeup. Um, obviously, if it gets torn or you, it gets damaged, you'd have to replace it. When you take your mask off, you wash your hands also because, you, again, you want your hands to be clean and you don't want to touch the outside of the mask. Um, what's nice is now we have people uh, making cloth masks. We have companies offering cloth masks. These are the type of masks that you, that, that you see a lot of people in pictures from, from previous pandemics. These can be reused. Same way that you would use that mask, it's just going to go over my face after I wash my hands. goes around my ears. I drop it on my, <laughs> I drop it on my coat. But you can see it goes around your ears like this. And again, now it's fit to your face. You can adjust this to your face and it stays like this. It's comfortable to wear during the day. You can now do what you need to do during your day. When you're done the day, <clears throat> oops, you wash your hands. And then you take your mask off. When you get home at the end of the day, and now these types of masks, because they're reusable, you can easily wash this. So it's really a good idea for everyone to invest in one or two of these reusable masks because then you can be socially responsible wash it, always have it with you, and put it on when you're gonna be in public situations. You know, social distancing, still the best thing you can do, but this is the next best thing you can do after that, after the hand washing and the social distancing to protect your family, protect your friends, and keep everyone else safe. So, um, hope that answers your questions about the way the masks, I don't know if you guys. No, that's, 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 that's yeah. great, it's great education on how to put it on and take it off, right. that's part of the, the concept. And again, it was, it was a great question, and it led to a, a wonderful description, so yeah. thank you. Uh, and, oh, and if you want to make these masks and donate them to people, we've been talking about that, that's a very good way that people can help. People are looking to help, that's a very good way to help is, is get these masks made and get it out to people so that way people have access to them. Great. So I just want to provide clarification to, uh, I guess, one question. Uh, they were asking about the Stewart Avenue entrance to Eisenhower Park. So uh, there are many layers of government here on Long Island in Nassau County, and Eisenhower Park is a Nassau County park. It is not a town of Hempstead Park, so the supervisor or any of the town board, uh, town board members have no authority on how we are exiting or entering uh, that park. But a common theme here, and which is, I guess, great to see, is that so many people are thankfully recovering. And whether it's, you know, I think it's, it's owed to everyone. It's to, to people that have really followed the rules, followed the protocol, the amazing uh, work that people have done in hospitals and doctors, firefighters, EMTs. Um, so it's great to see that people are recovering. And the question that comes up a lot here is, once someone has coronavirus, is tested, tested positive, and they recover, are they then, for the, for the future, immune to the coronavirus? Right, and this is a great question, and this yeah. is the $10 million and question. And I think it's one we've been asking right. over and over again. So there's a couple things. You may have heard um, people talking about antibody testing. The governor's been talking about that a lot. It's been in a lot of discussions. The county's been talking about it. We've actually been talking about it and looking into it. It's, it's, been, it's been the forefront of the things that we've been doing with our task force. So. Um, we think in most situations that you only will get uh, get this disease once. However, like any other virus, it can mutate. Um, and so some people may be able to get it again. So the most likely answer is yes, you're immune. What we want to do is get that antibody testing available on a regular basis uh, and then be able to test people because then you people that you know are recovering from it, you'd be able to see if they had antibodies to protect themselves from it. Um, the other thing that comes up a lot, this question's been um, uh, coming up frequently, is if you test positive, do you need to then test negative so you don't get your friends or family sick? Um, so the interesting thing about this virus, unlike the previous SARS virus, which we saw 20 years ago, that virus shedded the most about a week to two weeks within to the disease. 
this disease, this CoV-2, the second version of this that we're calling COVID, actually sheds the most in the first few days of the illness, sometimes when people only have very mild symptoms. Also, again, now, why we're talking about people wearing masks, because they may not realize that they're sick and they may be shedding these virus particles. So if you test positive, um, and then two weeks later, some people have been able to get to a second test and they're still coming up positive, that probably means there's a little bit of residual virus in their system, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be infecting others. The most chance of infecting others is in those first two days. And most people who get the virus once, to your question, Councilman, will not get the virus again. There is a chance that some people may either not clear it completely from their system or maybe be able to get it again, but that's a very small subset. So, so we'll get herd immunity from the people who get immune to it. We'll get a vaccine to this at some point. And then once we have those two things, then, then life will definitely return back to normal. So that's, that's what we need to aim for. That's what we're going for. So. Yeah, Doc, one of the questions that I see is, uh, is when things reopen. Uh, you know, perfect example, last night I was on the phone with my, uh, my friend Brian and his wife Kathy in Wisconsin. They were told yesterday they're not going to reopen until the end of May. So the governor set forth a new uh, timetable, mid-May. What's the significance of, of and why is this continually the delay of reopening? We need to explain to people, I think, or you can, yeah. why this is necessary for a longer period. Okay, so um, again, everything that you guys have done as our civilian first responders, they made the hospitals able to keep up. Every hospital that I know of has put a, a, a large number of staff in. They're bringing in help. They've expanded their floors. They've added ventilators. They've created ICUs. They've made all the space because we get this big uh, spike in people. Remember, everyone that, that was like that week or two where it seemed like everyone was getting sick. And then, the, and then people that were getting sick, a lot of them that went to the hospital required additional help, ventilators, um, um, very high um, uh, level of care. And so what you guys do when shutting everything down by social distancing, by putting on masks, is you slow that down so the health system can keep up and that prevents people from dying. It allows us to treat more people and allows us to slow that curve so less people get sick. The fear now, and if you look back to the pandemic in 1918, the Spanish flu, there was more than one peak. So we're at, we're, remember the curve, we're on the curve and we're at this plateau right now. We want it to start coming back down because the faster it comes down, the faster then we can all start returning to our normal lives with the vaccines and the treatments and the things that we need and that people are working on. The fear to the question of the supervisor is that if we let lighten up these restrictions, if people don't continue social distancing, you start to get crowds, you start to get people back together, is that it could peak again. And then that could even be even worse than the previous peak. If, if you look at Spanish flu in 1918, the second peak was more deadlier than the first. And they had all these, um, what they call non-pharmaceutical uh, interventions, the, the, the social distancing, the um, you know, hand washing, the shutting down of schools, the, the, the stopping of, of, of uh, you know, uh, congregations. They had all that in place in, in many places. And then when World War I was over, they had parades and parties and, and celebrations to, um, uh, to, to celebrate the end of the war. And then in all those places, they had this huge spike and a lot more people got sick because you brought everyone back together and then the virus got out. The virus doesn't care. The virus is, um, it will do, it's a virus. It does what it wants to do. If you have people together, it will spread. And remember, the more people you have together, the tighter the population density, the more of those droplets and the faster people can get sick. So we have to keep these restrictions in place until that curve starts coming down till we have reasonable ways of all of us going back to some normalance of life. Masks can help us with that. And then it's going to have to be a slow reopening with people social distancing so we don't get that second peak. We want it to continue going down. We don't want it to go back up. We, we've worked so hard now to stop this and to get control and to catch up. We, we can't let it then, you know, yeah. get the best of us again. I appreciate that. Councilman. Well, first, I just, I see that uh, Brian Sullivan from the uh, Corrections Officers Benevolent Association is listening. And I just, I know that uh, the supervisor and I were just talking about it this morning. We want to say thank you to him for all the work that he's doing on the front lines and, uh, keeping uh, his officers safe uh, and everything he's doing stay safe. And I also see a lot of, uh, of chiefs and officers from the volunteer fire service um, throughout the town of Hempstead. And I think, although the question hasn't been posed and it's probably not, it's probably not posed just because a lot of people don't realize the work that's being done. But um, in addition to coming here and doing these live Facebooks and the conference calls and, and the uh, protocols that we put in place and so much that we've done over the last 45 days with regards um, to COVID. We, we also have a uh, core group down at Point Lookout that's um, 
working at our emergency operations center. Um, and maybe, Dr. Dave, you could just kind of fill in the, you know, hundreds of people that are watching from home and give them a, a basic uh, understanding of, of what's really being done down there. And it's amazing work, and I, I really mean that. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thank you. So, so do we have two main goals. We have an emergency medical operations center, and out of there we're doing two things. The, the first is that we're keeping the town's uh, workforce safe. That has been my main charge um, with these uh, gentlemen leading the char you know, leading from the beginning. Um, we have a, a phone number that our town workers can call, manned by our personnel, uh, by our medical personnel where we anyone with any kind of COVID related concern um, if they develop symptoms if they have uh, questions about how to protect themselves they have questions about how to protect others um, all of those calls come through there and and I personally reach out to all of our town workers who might be sick who have family members who might be sick um, who are having symptoms who are having questions to so they know how best to protect themselves so we can best protect the workforce if the workforce is protected then then the town is protected and 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 that we have to keep our essential people healthy and that has been our charge from the beginning and that is super important so that that's very unique work that we have where, where you know, we, there's not a lot of towns that have their own doctor um, and you know I, and these gentlemen have been uh, more than supportive of, of what we're doing to make sure that everyone is state is safe so um, you know it's 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 our job to, out of there to keep our workforce healthy to keep the government running and to give you guys the right recommendations so we can keep not just our workforce healthy but our citizens healthy and then um, the town has always had an EMS agency, Town of Hempstead EMS, um, that for many years worked very closely with our parks department and our lifeguards, protecting our beaches and keeping all of our beachgoers safe and keeping all of our citizens that enjoy um, our parks down by the beaches safe. Um, when the pandemic uh, st occurred, um, uh, our agency last year had went to a higher level of care, to paramedic level of care. We were bringing more advanced medical um, uh, treatments, um, the ability to support our local fire department, um, all of that we started last summer. We kicked that into overdrive when the pandemic occurred and with the support of the supervisor, the councilman, the town board, and everyone, we were able to take Town of Hempstead EMS from a, um, a seasonal beach operation. Uh, this winter we had had a little bit more of a presence during the daytime um, and we were helping out fire departments with first response. Now we're a 24-7 operation. We have vehicles running out of there. We are, um, we are taking care of um, going out to people's houses and helping them when they're sick, giving them advice. We're uh, we were just at our animal shelter uh, the other day because we have um, some uh, workers that might have to interact and we were showing them how to put um, the proper gear on so they could be protected. We have been sending our EMTs out to all of our various departments, getting them educated, letting them know what has to happen. And now our EMTs are responding and backing up our local partners in the in the fire service. Uh, Iowa Park Fire Department, Point Lookout Fire Department, Freeport Fire Department especially have been great partners um, out of the 2nd Battalion and, and we have been working with everyone down there um, and have become really um, this huge team effort to make sure that we have uh, the proper, um, uh, you know, resources in place to keep everyone safe, um, you know, where our agency is. And, and we've always been talking about, you know, expanding that forward so that's something we'll work on. But just know that our guys are out there on the front lines. They um, answered the call just like all the other volunteers. And just a thank you to what the, the council said. I, they're, the, all the chiefs and the health department and the fire service and the EMS, um, and they're, you know, um, we, we've, uh, you know, Wancho Levittown's been helping us out, the volunteer ambulance. We, we have had so many partners lately that we've worked with um, that we just have to say thank you. It's been this huge team effort. And the county level as well, um, you know, the, um, the county EOC and, and their OEM and um, the Emergency Ambulance Bureau from the county, everyone really has been working together and stepped up. And it's a really impressive thing to see that, that all of your emergency service agencies are working together. So just to know that you have a whole team of people, not just at the hospitals, but pre-hospital that are taking care of everybody. And so that's, it's really important. And I'm glad that you brought that to life, Councilman. It's really good. Uh, a couple of uh, the, uh, comments and suggestions that came uh, for, we had today, there was an event down in Elmont where Island Harvest uh, was helping with food distribution to those in need. For anybody who needs ass assistance with food, please dial 631-873-4775. Again, that's 631-873-4775. And, and noticing, I've seen a couple of people asking about recyclables. First off, recyclables were, were suspended, and the purpose of that was to alleviate staffing uh, where we could free up additional 15 trucks if needed during this pandemic. I understand it's an inconvenience. We apologize and we thank you for, for working with us. We know it could be an inconvenience. We're going to be relooking at that uh, based on what our director, uh, Commissioner of Sanitation, uh, says his sick and availability is. And we will in institute it uh, back in procedure uh, when we can. I do want to let you know, though, 
the Merrick uh, yard down on Merrick Road. You can drop your recyclables off down there if you choose to. Uh, so you do have that avail availability if necessary. But again, we appreciate everybody you know, working with us. Uh, this is unheard of. This is something that's never happened before. You know, let it be from, from any of the services. Uh, everyone's trying to do, do their best and provide on a regular basis. And, and primary sanitation was an essential service that we need to have garbage collected. Uh, and recycling will come back up and it will be recognized. And just like, uh, as the councilman alluded to before, we see a lot of comments from people about reopening of parks and golf courses. And in due time, uh, when the, the governor allows us to, uh, we hope those will be instituted and, and reopened. How will they be reopened or what would they look like? That's something that's going to be, have to be determined by medical professionals like yourself, Dr. Dave, uh, as well as experts about how we put all this. But we recognize it, but, but again, it's a two-way street. It's the services we're trying to provide, but also the understanding of the residents. And, and we're all very, very appreciative of it, so thank you all. Uh, Doc, so kind of, uh, it's a great question. Um, obviously, people have some more time on their hands. Um, their favorite gyms are closed, um, so people are outside, whether it's riding their bike, whether it's going for a run, going for a walk. So there was a question uh, from one of my constituents in Oceanside, but I think, you know, it really affects everybody uh, in the town. Uh, if they go out for a walk or they go out for a run or a bike ride, do they need to have a mask on? Um, so, again, the mask is to protect others more than to protect yourself. That's the, so the idea is, and the, and the governor's order was specific that if you can't social distance, that that's when you need to be wearing the mask. Um, it, it's sometimes hard to know when you're gonna get too close to someone, which is why you know routine wear, mask wearing is a good idea. But again, remember, the droplets that we're concerned about that aren't the direct contact um, have to be in the air in an enclosed environment. So if you're outside and you're enjoying a bike ride or you're going on a run, or you're in the and you're and you know and you're more than six feet away from people, then that air is clean. It is right. not just floating through the air coming to get you. Uh, you have to think about uh, minimizing your time in enclosed um, spaces without air movement and with lots of people around you. So if the exact opposite of that is going to a park and you're there by yourself or you're riding your bike, um, those are very healthy things that you should be doing to keep yourself healthy. We you know this is psychological as much as it's physical, and we need to do things to make us feel feel some semblance of normal. So if you want to go surfing and there's no one else around, that's fine. If you want to go on a bike ride and you're not you're not you're not running into other people, that's fine. If you want to go for a run, that's great. I mean these are all the things that you should be doing um, in order to keep yourself healthy and to keep your mind you know sane and to keep things you know going so supervisor if I can I just want to follow up there was a, another question about recycling and I think that it's important to kind of make it clear so the, the town of Hempstead has suspended its recycling so that means anyone who is serviced by the town of Hempstead sanitation um, there are many again layers of government here in the town um, some of you are serviced by uh, incorporated villages some of you are serviced by um, sanitation districts that have um, elected board members. So there was a question, why does one part of the town of Hempstead have recycling and one side does not? Uh, if you are serviced by the town of Hempstead Sanitation, um, your recycling is suspended. We can't speak for all the other municipalities uh, and all the other sanitation districts. If you have a question, um, you know, you could call the hotline that we gave before and we'd be happy to help you out. And, and along the lines of many of the residents, you know, so many of you have great ideas and you're posting them up um, and a lot of the concerns you have are, are issues we're, we're addressing, but we also love suggestions. You know, there is the concept that, that people are now taking gloves and coming out of a supermarket and just taking them off and, and throwing them on the ground. Which is gross. Uh, which is gross and unsanitary and, and a danger. Uh, we've been reaching out to uh, vendors who own those fields to try and come up with a plan, you know, that people can take them and put them in a secure location. Uh, there was this story today about people taking gloves and other items and just flushing them down the toilet and clogging the sewer lines. Now, I think not only in the town, your other levels of government are looking at it, but if you do have a suggestion or idea, don't be shy about emailing it to the town. You know, some of the greatest ideas come from the residents, and if they can be incorporated, we want to incorporate that uh, and do it. And, and the idea sitting in your head, just don't leave it there. Send it to the town. If, if you don't tell us or you don't share it with us, how can we make that positive change uh, if you're keeping it to yourself? Uh, so I would, I would encourage anybody to do that. And again, I see somebody saying, you know, when will the beach uh, be open? When will the pool be open? A lot of those guidelines are going to be set forth by physicians like Dr. Dave, as well as the state. Uh, and just so you know that 
We've been in communications with the other townships and other municipalities, and we're just waiting for guidance to see how it's going to look. Uh, but we're also meeting every single, single day, going forward with ideas and plans if there is distancing required at a beach, if there is limitation of crowds, um, and, and they will be implemented and, and used. Yeah. And there are guidelines that just came yesterday. They were talking from the CDC about a phased reopening of various places. And obviously, we're going to coordinate that with um, the state and the county and, and our government. But just understand that, that physicians, I mean, I can tell you there have been very hard decisions that medical personnel have had to make. We've never faced something like this. We are very sensitive to the fact that a lot of you are not working, that um, that you, this is an economical uh, uh, you know, uh, depression that, that you get when we can't be working, that it's hard for people to be inside that all of these things we're asking of you are very uh, tall orders. But if, if you look over the years of any place that has dealt with a pandemic, if you deal with it up front and you take the hit up front and then you stop the pandemic, on the other side, the economy recovers, the people recover. You have less dead people, you have less injured people, you have less sick people. So while it seems some of this is archaic and some of this is hard and some of this might be an overkill, you, we can promise you that these are the right choices to be making. We're doing the right thing together. Socially, we'll get through this together. And if we get this stuff done, and then we do the right way, and the economy will recover, and people will get back to work, and we'll do things, and, and life will get back to normal. It might be some time. I mean, it might be longer than we want, but it will work. And if you look back, it, there's clear evidence that these steps work in the front if you, if you follow them, and that on the back end, it, it, it then lightens up. So just we have to just hold the course. I know it's hard, but it's just important. Uh, you know, there's some questions from um, our valued workforce asking about, again, kind of sort of the same question. You know, when is the town going to be in operation? And I think everything that we've said so far um, is really important. We are making sure that we follow all the guidelines from the state. Um, we're taking uh, the advice of our medical doctor, um, and the goal is to keep everyone safe and healthy. Obviously, we all want nothing more than our lives to go back to normal um, and, you know, wake up tomorrow and all of this goes away. But unfortunately, this is going to be a gradual process. And um, just as we gradually reduce the workforce over a matter of a week or so, um, I think the gradual increase of our workforce is going to be a little bit longer than that. But um, obviously the goal of the supervisor and the town board um, is to get everyone back here, is to get uh, you know our, our family back together, be able to provide uh, all of the services that we, uh, we promise our residents, and we just want to remain, everyone to remain healthy. Yeah. And, 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 and you're right, you know, like, listen, I, you know, Gooch, I read your comment out there, you know, we want to get people back. Uh, but we want to do it in a fashion that is protective of every resident in the town as well as every employee. Uh, and that's something when they, they, they're talking about We talk to the Dave and the town board talks uh, every day uh, about how we're going to implement safeguards for both our co-workers in every department as well as for all of the thousands of residents who utilize these buildings, these parks, these services. Um, and there is no easy snap of the fingers that this is going to change overnight and there's going to be changes and everyone needs to be realistic to that in, in our in our daily life, but with the services here. But we will get back, uh, but it will in some ways it will be different, but the idea is that we're all healthy in the end and it is the combination of every resident being safe, but every single coworker we have here in the town, you know, we want you to be just as safe, and but we also want you to get back to work and we recognize that. Uh, Doc, before may we end it, I'll, I'll let you have a couple of comments here about well, what you think. Just one more question, sure. I'm sorry. Yeah. So this is actually a question that um, came up last night. I got a call and maybe you can, I, I see that, you know, there's a lot of, um, again, our um, volunteer fire chiefs and officers and um, a lot of um, our friends and family from Camp Anchor um, that are watching from home. And the question that I actually got last night was um, when you're, you know, obviously everyone's encouraged to wear masks if they have to go outside. Um, and, you know, is there any tips uh, that you can provide uh, to someone who is trying to um, put a mask on someone who maybe has autism or, um, you know, has a problem with things on their face? Um, you know, I, I think it's definitely, uh, it's, it's tough. Yeah. And, um, you know, the parents, guardians, grandparents, uh, caretakers want to make sure that, um, you know, before their loved ones are going out in the public that they're 
providing you know every possible resource that they can sure and obviously sometimes it's tough to get to get masks on yeah well I mean I mean clearly something like this that's gonna be you know force formed on someone's face is gonna be uncomfortable for someone that if you, you know who a lot of times they have issues with um, you know uh, claustrophobia or they have issues with with touching or or people or, or enclosing on them so I think that the best answer councilman is is that um, if you uh, have someone that has that's on the spectrum or that has um, you know issues with um, um, you know with um, you know uh, things being in close to them, you, you know how that person's going to best react. You know what makes that person comfortable, what makes them not comfortable. And the, the, um, the face covering, it could be a bandana, it can be, um, you know, it could be a shirt. So, I mean, I think you Maybe could, something you, that's their favorite color or favorite yes, color. Yes, or, 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 or and, and you can also, maybe there's some smell that they like or some, some texture that they like. So if it's, if, you know, if they like, um, you know, like a felt or some kind of like softer fabric, you can, you know, if there's not, um, what this is doing is preventing, and, and, and the most important thing, remember, is that this is preventing others from getting sick. So you're going to put that mask on them, but you want to make sure everyone around them. So, so that's the most important thing is if you have someone that you're worried about that's a high risk, is making sure that, that you enforce that six foot. I, I went shopping the other day, and people were getting too close to me, and I actually said out loud, stop, you are too close to me, you need to back up. And they looked at me, and I, I. That doesn't matter. Like this is. I think that there's a very nice way you can do that. There, you sometimes have to remind people because they're not used to this. It's very hard to be disciplined when you're not used to this. But I think you know, if you have, you explain to people how important it is for them to maintain that distance. You find a way for the people around them to have masks on, and then, and then the the person that you know, the special needs person, finding a way of doing that that they're comfortable with. I think that that would and be very the, reasonable. The plastic uh, face shield wouldn't do the same job, obviously, as a no. Actually, shield. that would be fine too. It would be fine. Yeah, okay. if, they, if they would prefer a plastic. So that's something that's more yes. comfortable so, for them. So basically, yeah. Yes, basically you want to prevent those droplets from getting towards okay. them. So, so no, a, a plastic face shield, as, as so long as it's better it, than something if they obviously don't want to sitting on, on their face. Correct, if they don't like that, yep, that would be a good idea and, too. And, yeah. and, and it's such a great question because just yesterday we were having a round table talking and uh, the question came up with the, the use of masks. What if someone has a, uh, an issue where they, they can't hear and they need the necessity to read lips? Uh, and it's through having discussions that we were having about these that you know open up that, that, that area and make us say we need to take that into account. And that's why this is almost uncharted territory, uh, but, but again, uh, it's through opportunities like this that we, we hope that the residents and some of the workforce that are, are watching here, uh, this has answered your questions. Uh, again, Doc, would you like to? to yeah. No, and I, I mean, get, no, I just want to end with um, that it, it's been very awesome to see the outpouring support for uh, the, for your front uh, line workers in this, for the essential workers, for the healthcare workers, the number of people that have reached out to us, you know, understand that that your uh, your police officers and firefighters, your EMTs, doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, all the medical people, PAs, NPs, we are seeing things that we've never seen. It's very nice that I have all these people reaching out and, and asking how we're doing. All of my colleagues, people have been dropping off food. I mean, it's important to feed everybody. So I mean, you know, but just. Understand that if you reach out to your uh, friends and family members that are on the front lines, they appreciate it. And I think the really cool, or not cool, but the really socially awesome thing about this is that our frontline workers are the people in the supermarket. They are, you know, there they, are, you know, our cashiers. There are workers that are, at, you know, it's in not Costco. Right, line. right, right. We're, you know, I, I, I tipped the, 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 the kid who checked me out at the, the other day got a twenty dollars tip for me because he was standing there and he looked scared, but he was there making sure that we had food and we had resources. So, you know, there, there are like, you know, our sanitation workers, our, our water department. You know, there are so many people that you don't typically think of as first responders. You guys, as civilian first responders. But just it, this is—I think that has been the really good society thing about this—is that we're all together in this, and that we have people. So, so support them, appreciate them, thank them, understand that all, we're all in this together. I think that if we work together as a team, we we keep together as a society. We understand that we're all in this together. I, that's really the part I think that I want to make sure that gets out there. I think that if everyone can do that and appreciate the people that are out there working and and, and understand that they're everyone has a job in this and everyone's doing a really good job and we keep doing that, we're going to get through this together. So I think thank, that's the most important thank, thing. Thank, thank you as always, doctor. Yeah. We're, we're lucky to have you. And like I said, you have such a great disposition. Yeah. You make any doctor, you know, you're the first one I've ever liked. Yeah. Uh, Councilman, uh, any any closing comments? Nah, I mean, I, listen, just to reiterate everything that uh, you and the doctor have said, um, you know, this is a, a rough time in our township, in our county, on Long Island, across our nation. Um, but I think that uh, we could all agree that, you know, some of the worst of times bring out the very best in a lot of people. And um, like the doctor said, it, it's not just uh, the cops, the firemen, the nurses, the doctors, but all of those who are on the front line um, making our, our lives move forward. 
Uh, there's so many of you to thank, but just know that uh, mail delivery, UPS, yeah, mail like, delivery, I mean, everybody. Like we all at home get um, packages. I mean, you know. but everybody at home um, to our CSEA workforce that's doing an amazing job. You know, my prayers are with all of you. We'll get through this, and let's just uh, keep working together to move forward. Everyone, stay healthy and God bless. Stay safe, everybody. Yeah, and 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 lastly, uh, let me just say again, thank you to everybody. Thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for every coworker we have here. And for that one or two people that are on there saying, hey, you know, I'm at home, what can I do? You know, here's a great idea, Sherry. You can make that cloth mask. You could sit there and make a couple a day, and then we can give them out to our coworkers. So if you're at home and you need something, yeah. something like that goes further than you'll ever know because uh, people out there don't have the means, people don't have the ability, and these are important things, and especially for, for this workforce, uh, when, when it is back in full and at one of its strength, we're going to need things like this, distribute out to them, and then we can then take it and take it to the next level and provide those things as a simple mask to that senior citizen at the senior center or to that, that clerk or any of the stores. But, again, thank you all. Uh, what was that? The hotline, well, the hotline number. Uh, you can go to the town website and get the hotline number, or you can dial 516-812-3600. You can be directed to the building department, the tax department, the parks department, or the clerk's. Uh, we will, uh, you know, get around to uh, doing a quick turnaround to getting your response. We're provide, providing services uh, still five days a week here at Town Hall uh, through these numbers or through the web. And more importantly, I just ask everybody to stay safe, stay home, and follow the doctor. And at someday, we'll be back together, all of us again. So take care. God bless.